episode 19 and we've got a helper today very enthusiastic very helpful now I'm pretty much in the same place I was last time could you imagine that and what I've been playing around with today is uh, putting my PTO drive on the PTO output and finding out that this is in the way um, so I've basically narrowed it down to two options one I can get a piece out of Malaysia that instead of bolting on here I can run my PTO drive off the back here um, which means my winch will be rear mount which pretty much the only solution for this because of this is to run it rear mount anyway so yes just figuring out whether I want to cut this bracket off let me get in here so I've got to figure out whether I'm cutting my link bracket off and pushing it out that way and then cutting the chassis here and here and putting a step in it so that my PTO drive once it's attached to here will clear the chassis because it's hard up on that side as well so yes if you ever want to run a Land Cruiser gearbox in a Suzuki chassis with a PTO you now know how tight it is but what I'm thinking which I wanted to be doing but I kind of got distracted trying to make it fit get everything in the right spot but I'm basically going to run some plate just like that and then I'm going to start remaking my gearbox tunnel off that and I do have this heater and stuff that came out which is sitting over there on my messy bench but basically the heater stuff took up so much space here all the way to the top and then under this vent what I found online is at uh, who sells it at Jegs um, they've got what they call a hot rod heater kit so it's this little box they actually have a bunch of different ones but it's basically a little box and I reckon I can make it mount up there and it pretty much let me readjust. So I'm pretty much going to mount it up there and it's going to come down to kind of like that. And then that gives me all this extra space here to do as I please with my center console and dash, etc. So I'm kind of looking forward to making things a lot simpler with that setup. Not the cheapest, but oh, I think it's like 140 bucks US or something and then an extra 60 bucks for the um, windscreen defog kit which is cool that's a definitely a priority um, you may be thinking it's a bush truck why do you need a heater but in winter when it's cold and you're muddy and wet it's quite nice jumping into a warm vehicle so call me soft call me what you will but I'll be basking in the warmth of the truck in the winter Anyways, I shall carry on. I'll um, wake up my assistant and see if we can come up with a solution for this. Option A costs money. Option B requires effort. So, I'll let you know how I get on. Let the rebuild begin. Right, so laid some beads, just stitch welded it. Now, 
it's super solid which is fantastic and then I'll do across there and I'll do down there and then I can uh, build my frame off that and I know it's going to be nice and strong simple as that The effort it required, yeah, it's probably worth it. So I can build it the way I want. It's going to suit my needs, my application, and uh, there's still going to be plenty of foot room over here. And yes, I put the seat back in, and I did check that. So um, yeah, on to the next bit, I suppose. So today, instead of doing something productive on the zoo, like continuing to rebuild my firewall, I decided while the sun was out, that I needed to put my second coat on my rims and I'm going to paint my shocks. So, here we are with the ingredients we need to wrap the line everything. We've got the tintable wrap the liner, we've got the hardener, and we've got the tint. So, what I need to do here is mix the 250 mils with the 750 mils to make the one litre, and then we've got to mix the hardener up to 10%. Now, I run 7.5% just because. So, I'm going to put 75 mils of this into here, and then I'm going to tip it into here, and I'm going to shake it like a Polaroid picture until it's ready to get squirted on my rims and my shocks. So, let's get into it, because it ain't going to get done if I sit here talking to you guys all day. I can't say I've ever seen anyone wrap the line shocks before, so I thought I'd give them a shot to see if it works out or not. Uh, now they are aluminium body, so I did edge prime it, because we're hoping the edge prime sticks to the aluminium, otherwise it might create issues later on. But, got to try out these things, see if they work. Came out pretty wicked. And obviously second coat on the rims. Yo! So uh, yeah, let us know in the comments below what you think of this wicked green colour. I can't wait to uh, get my wheels on and get it on the truck. Uh, the reason why I'm putting the second coat on is because my tyres are supposed to be here shortly. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for the announcement of what tyres I've actually finally decided on. And We'll go from there. But we'll see you guys next week. Make sure. Yeah. Keep yourself warm. Offer an addiction apparel. It's the goods. It's pretty hard wearing so far. I've been plasma cutting with it. A little bit of welding. So yeah, it's all good. We're happy. Very, very happy. But get yourself a tight squeeze one. Support the project. And uh, we'll see you next week. Right. So I thought I'd give you a sneak peek of what everything turned out like before we go. And I'm pretty damn stoked with them. Obviously there's still a few bits of masking tape here and there that's still stuck, but that was definitely worth taking the time to make them stand out. Well, I'm absolutely stoked with that. That came out so good. I wasn't expecting them to come out that good, but they look awesome. I can't wait to get some tires on and get some beadlock rings on there. I might paint them and wrap to black just to make them stand out a little bit. But yes, definitely this time I'm out. We'll see you next week.